let's talk about artificial intelligence. We gave birth to AI. AI. When you think of AI, you might think of this kind of thing. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But AI is no longer science fiction. It's everywhere. From the algorithms that suggest what videos or music you might like, to predictive text, to the chatbot answering your banking inquiry. AI is becoming almost like electricity. You know, it's just something that's going to become ubiquitous. We don't recognize the extent to which our lives are being altered by the technology that is being permitted. So what exactly is AI? It's the instruction manual itself, and it can continuously adjust those instructions to get better at what it's designed to do. Take Google Maps, for example. It uses machine learning to combine real-time data about traffic conditions with historical data to generate super accurate predictions for how long your trip might take. And the more it does this, the better it gets at it. But in the last 10 years, it's really taken off for a couple of reasons. Computers are kind of doubling in power every two years, and this has been going on for decades now. And so we got to the point where we had really fast computers. We also had lots and lots of data, more data than ever before. And really the last decade or so has been probably the most consequential period in, in artificial intelligence. Today, we're at the point where AI is being applied in almost every sector, even on this show. We use AI software to transcribe our interviews. Also think home appliances, self-driving cars, and healthcare. It's where also I think it has most promising applications, for example, in scanning or helping radiologists identify tumors and other cancers uh, more accurately than humans can. Now, in all of the examples we've mentioned so far, the AI system is essentially just doing one thing. And called DeepMind, which is owned by Google, said it had taken a step in that direction. Its AI model called Gato was able to carry out more than 600 tasks like play video games, search for images, and use a robotic arm to stack blocks all at the same time. One scientist at the company said Gato means it's game over, that achieving AGI is now just a matter of scaling up this technology. One group of people thinks if we just keep taking this approach, and make these existing systems faster and bigger, you know, scale them up in essence, eventually we'll get to something that looks like human intelligence. Go back to your room. Never mind the fears about the next level after that, artificial super intelligence, where the machines go beyond human intelligence and we start moving closer towards those sci-fi extremes. Skynet has become self-aware. In one hour, it will initiate a massive nuclear attack on its enemy. But we don't need to go that far to think about why we might want to control AI. Because the technology we're using today is already throwing up all sorts of issues, starting with privacy and civil liberties. So for example, facial recognition now creates a super powerful tool to identify people just through security cameras in the street. So how governments or police might use or abuse that tech is an important debate. In Russia, for example, police appear to be using it to identify anti-government protesters. And the Chinese government is probably taking it further than anyone else, using facial recognition cameras on a mass scale to track people and monitor their behavior. There are several reports, and there are plenty of ways that can play out. In the US, for instance, a widely used algorithm to help assess healthcare needs was shown to have a built-in racial bias. Then there's the danger of design faults or problematic assumptions about the way that an AI system is intended to work. For example, the AI system was found to be a factor in the two plane crashes of the Boeing 737 MAX, one in Indonesia and one in Ethiopia. 346 people died. The autopilot was AI powered and it wasn't designed to allow for a human override. Uh, so it gave dangerous nose down commands and it forced the plane to crash. And what happens if a self-driving car kills someone? Who's responsible? There's a case going through the courts in California right now that's dealing with that very issue. The thing is, makes algorithmic mistakes, it's not a mistake by the computer, it's a mistake about how it was written, how the code was written, and whether or not the processes were put in place for adequate recourse 
so that you can tell if something's gone wrong. The stakes got even higher when we're talking about war and AI being used in lethal weapons. We already have armed drones controlled by people that use AI technology, but it's not a big stretch to get to fully autonomous weapons. So machines making life and death decisions about who or what to target. It's probably inevitable, but it's, it's really quite scary. You can imagine some really bad situations happening. Imagine in the Taiwan Strait, for example, having a large group of American drones facing off Chinese drones, and they're trained on classified data, how these two swarms of drones interact and whether they might accidentally uh, fire at one another because they mistake maybe some light reflecting of a drone for an attack. Um, that could mean that you accidentally end up in a war or even a nuclear conflict. Proposals for an international ban on autonomous weapons have languished at the UN since 2017. There's been plenty of talking, but no agreement. The US says it wants a non-binding code of conduct instead of an outright ban. But it's not just the AI used in weapons that people want to control in place to regulate AI. It's focused on the private sector, especially tech companies, forcing them to be transparent about how AI is being used. What is tissue engineering? The idea is to create functional tissues, to regenerate, repair or replace damaged tissues and organs. There are three components in tissue engineering. Cells to create a functional matrix, scaffolds to support tissue growth, signals to direct cell growth and differentiation. Let's take a closer look at the process. First, donor tissue is extracted. The cells contained therein are isolated, transferred into culture, and grown under controlled conditions. Cells are seeded into a scaffold. Growth factors and stimuli are added. Tissue growth is achieved. Finally, the new tissue is implanted into the human body.
can tattoos embrace technology in order to make the skin interactive? The Dermal Abyss presents a novel approach to biointerfaces in which the body's surface is rendered an interactive display. Traditional inks are replaced with biosensors whose colours change in response to variations in the intestinal fluid. The pH sensor changes between purple and pink and the glucose sensor between blue and brown. The sodium and second pH sensor fluoresce in, at a higher intensity under UV light. The dermal abyss creates direct access to the compartments of the body and reflects inner metabolic processes in the shape of a tattoo. It could be used for applications in continuously monitoring such as medical diagnostics, quantified self and data encoding in the body. Preliminary evaluation was done in an ex vivo pig skin model. Several injections in the skin were done in order to understand the visibility and functionality of the biosensors. In the same way that the wearables industry is integrating fashion practices into their development, we envision new participation between the biotech companies and skin professionals, such as prosthesis experts and tattooists, in order to embrace the idea of human.